Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Spotlight Series for this 2020 off-season for the Carlton Football Club. Uh, a big one here, Pom. It's, uh, we're treading into enemy territory here. Uh, to enemy territory here, we speak of none other than Zach Merritt. Now, why Zach Merritt? And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll let you take the floor. Well, there was just an article this morning saying that they believe Zach Merritt is on the outer at the club. He's indicated that he's exploring his options, wants to explore his options. The other article as well from Tom Brown suggested that Essendon would be willing to do the trade and that they feel that they could get a commodity for him. And I also think from a personal point of view, if we get Saad and Merritt, how good would it be to win our next flag with two of their boys in our side that are now blue boys? It'd be quality banter to get stuck into them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, um, we've done Taranto in this series. Um, you know, we've looked at Lockie Hunter in this series. So, the, I mean, obviously what we're looking for, what we believe as fans that uh, we think that we need is another, you know, genuine on-baller, A-grade on-baller. And, and, and Zach Merritt's a guy who has probably needed to shoulder the load for a bit prior to Dylan Shield getting there. I think Dyson Heppel, he's a very good player. I'm not sure if he's got that, you know, superstar ability. And and Zach look, seems like a guy who would, let's just say he was, a, you know, at the footy club, at our footy club. He looks like a guy who would slot perfectly into that second or third slot where Sam Walsh and Cripps um, and, you know, maybe him and Zach Williams are. Oh, I mean, this guy's got everything. I mean, one of the things is that... We're, we're poor at disposal efficiency. Effective disposals is our big one. Ranks fourth in the AFL for that. Ranks fourth for disposal accumulation. He's top three for inside 50s. He's numero uno at inside 50s, resulting in a score. This, wow. is, the, this is the boy that you want to fix that. That is the issue we've got. He's ranked seventh in metres gained. This guy is literally everything you want and more. And I also think he adds an element that we don't have. He utilises the handball supremely well. Ranked number two in the compact handball efficiency as well. So that is a huge thing. This guy hits targets for a living. A very, very solid footballer in every sense of the word for me. He's what we haven't got as well. We haven't got a natural accumulator that can kind of gloss, add the gloss to the midfield. You've got Cripper, who's the beast. He gets it out. You've got Walsh, who's the flashy type player, who is the X factor. This guy's like the gaff of Carlton. He's, he, he's the glue that holds it together, that allows the great players to do what they do. And he's everywhere. You watch Zach Merritt play, he's everywhere. Anytime you need that handball out of trouble, he's the man. If you need a kick out of trouble, he's the man. He works the ground exceptionally hard. And I, I, I love Zach Merritt. I hate to say it about an Essendon guy, but, I mean, this guy fits what we're looking for as well. Perfect age profile. He'd get on with the kids because he looks like he owns a Corsa and listens to trance rap. He is literally that perfect player for this football club. If, if you're looking for a midfielder that you go out for, this is probably the bloke. Yeah, I, I think the gone of the day, and I would, I mean, I'm, I'm not speaking on anyone else's behalf, but for me, gone of the days of, you know, nah, we can't get him because he's played for Essendon. No, that's ridiculous. If he's good enough and he fits what we need, we've got to have, have a conversation about him. But having said that, we know that Essendon can be an interesting team to deal with. We know Dodoro likes to be Dodoro at times. So, and, and, and Zach Merritt would be right up there with their, you know, required players. So, Realistically, what is it going to take to to get Zach Merritt to Carlton? Because we, like I said, we know exactly how Dodoro rolls. To get a good deal with Dodoro is impossible. It, it's it's like negotiating with North Korea at times. It's not easy. You know he's got it in for Carlton as well. He doesn't like dealing with us. There's been about two or three trades in his history that is he's he's either screwed us over are being very harsh to deal with. So he's going to come at a cost. Now, for me, I think the cost, which would be two first-rounders minimum, I think they would look for. They know how good he is. When you're top four of disposals, efficiency, no one in the history of the game goes for below two firsts as a minimum. That would be a starting point. And we know he's not the type of bloke that gives up his golden eggs for cheap. And... It's going to be a great task for Nick Austin. 
could, could Nick Austin maybe broker a deal? You look at Matt Kennedy could be an interesting one for them. We know he could be maybe the state knives. You'd imagine if Merrick comes in, Williams, he was out of favour with some of the players we've got at the club already, Matt Kennedy. You'd imagine that would be the end of Matt Kennedy's time at Carlton. Is that someone that maybe is a deal breaker for them? Is that someone that we can say you need a hard contested player? Cutler hasn't done it for you. Kennedy's got the numbers behind him. He's fit. He looked good the last couple of games for Carlton. Is that something that maybe would maybe sway him? I don't know. I can't answer that. But for me, it, it probably is something that you'd inquire about, I'd say. If likelihood, I bet Nick Austin has seen the reports, heard the rumours, and he's probably had the conversation. But it could come at an expense. It, and is that expense worth doing? And that's the tough one. If it's too first, it's probably not worth doing when we need so much. Yeah. I mean, we've obviously got pick seven as it stands right now. Is this the kind of player you're looking at dangling pick seven for? It could be the kind of type of player that if you could maybe package him up because they know that we're going for Saad. And it might be that case then that you say, well, two first rounders, few next year's, this year's second rounder, and maybe their, second, their third rounder coming back, Cal, and maybe look at it doing it that way. You know, if you package players up, you genuinely get a better deal. And you can maybe look at it and think, well, Saad wants out. Merrick wants out, we're giving you two firsts and maybe throw in a Kennedy as the state knives. You get the player that you're looking for. Cutler hasn't worked. This guy's better than Cutler. What do you say? You've got a million and a half off your books. Could be something that he looks at then because you sell it that way. Also, you look at Essendon, their picks are horrible this year. They've got six and nothing to 30. So you've probably got a bit of wiggling room as well with that, with father and sons and NGA picks that they're looking at. Could be a good, intriguing time, that. I think Essendon's a good team to trade with because they've got a lot of uncertainty. And you look at that list, they need something. And although he's harsh to deal with, he's not stupid. He knows that they need to fix a few problems there. So you could maybe, I'd maybe try and look at Saad and Merritt in a package deal to reduce the cost in the long term. Yeah, no, I like it. That's a very interesting one there. I very much have enjoyed this one. But uh, guys, what about you at home? Thoughts on Zach Merritt? I know he plays for the Bombers, but seeing as he fills the holes that we, we know that we need filling, would you have a look at him? Do you think pick seven is the type of pick we should be using to get a player like Zach Merritt? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Hey!